How are we doing today, guys? Great, how are you? Good. I'm so happy to talk about this book. I loved it, and I love the flavor this book is, and it's so approachable, and I think that's so important for a book that's setting up a whole world of books, and that's really exciting for me. Where did the idea come from to start with this character in particular? Um, I pitched this a series to uh, DC, but I pitched origin stories and group books because coming from YA, I felt like I really wanted the readers to be able to get invested and like have an adventure with the character. Yeah. And I didn't know if they'd go for it, and they totally did. So now we're gonna have origin stories, and then I also um, pitched a group book, but I just thought it'd be more fun if we get to know them before they hang out. Absolutely. And when you first found out this particular character, Raven's got such a legacy, such a beautiful history, how was it finding your voice and the shape of the character through your pen? Uh, I've been drawing a lot of Teen Titans fan art before getting hired to do this book. So I already had this look going on. Uh, I take a lot of inspiration from the animated cartoon, which was what introduced me to, the hero to these superheroes. So I already had the, like a look that the DC was looking for for this line, which is this relatable, uh, more um, down-to-earth uh, aesthetic for for these uh, for sure. these heroes, yeah. Now they've been reinterpreted a few times. Most recently, Titans on the DC universe, yeah. and I think that's one of the strengths of these characters is they're so versatile. You can make them your own in your own way. Was that something that drew you to the Titans in particular? Um, I'm a huge Titans fan. Uh, Raven, I can really relate to Raven. I. I was kind of, I wasn't an, I had a lot of friends, but I still felt kind of different in mm -hmm. high school. And I remember that feeling. I taught for 17 years. I spent time with teens. She's just to me a great character because she's not one note, you know, she encompasses light and dark. She's got a struggle, you know, with her, like with her inner demons, literally, <laughs> but also metaphorically. And, um, I, you know, I've always related to her. I think she's great. One thing Gabriel does that's really unique is um, he was drawing them in regular clothes, mm -hmm. like not costumes. So I saw his work on Pinterest and I was like, he is perfect because what I want them to do, I want them to look like, you know, Raven could be your best friend or sitting next to you in English class. Yeah. So that you could really get the relatability um, without stripping away the things that are special about her. And one of the things that I really loved, and speaking of the art tying into the, the, the verbiage, is the color use draws you to certain parts of the panel, but it also reflects in the verbiage. And I love that your attention is going to this part of the panel, this part of the panel. How much did you guys work together in shaping all of that as part of the narrative? Uh, we were trying to, um, initially, I, uh, we were going to do like full color, but then uh, I think this more muted uh, aesthetic, it, works better for the book as a whole because uh, it's a long book so you can just see everything in one sitting because everything is like so pleasing yeah. and like muted you know michelle so. uh, wells who's the um, head of the line but also our editor mm -hmm. uh -huh. really had a vision and when she saw gabriel's um color and everything she had this vision for the line of just like kind of having a subtle sophistication that would run through the books to kind of also just like honor the art yeah. and because like I mean I have a love for pencils and so when she kind of brought it that option to us we loved it and then we just worked with Gabriel's colors and um, David Calderon who's you know an amazing colorist to get the palette but it was interesting because it nat it was such a natural fit. Yeah, it, it's one of my favorite parts of the book is that it, it's so unique, but it still feels like a comic book. Mm -hmm. And I it's a graphic that. novel in its own way, but yep. it has that beating heart. And your art actually reminds you of Mike Ringo, who's one of my favorite artists of all time. And I love the cartoon sensibility, but still photo real flavor. And New Orleans is captured so beautifully through both the verbiage and the art. It almost is a character in this book. And how important was that to you to have New Orleans be a beating heart of this? Um, my original co-authored series with Margaret Stoll, Beautiful Creatures, um, the, the settings were basically considered characters by everyone. So it's something I'm kind of known for doing. And DC said, um, you know, we love Gotham, Metropolis, New York, but like we would kind of love it if you would pick a new place. Like so yeah. we could get some new places. And it was, there was kind of like, you know, maybe the South? And so I was like, I knew New Orleans right away because it's such a unique place. Yeah. And she's a unique character. But the real challenge was obviously Gabriel had never been there. And oh, as you, yeah, you I, know, I, I relied a lot, unique. a lot on references. So tell, tell, tell us what it was like to do New Orleans, like as someone who had not seen the city. Like, it felt like I was at Cafe Du Monde, man. Like those beignets scene. I love that. That, that, that means a lot because um, 
especially because I'm not like environments are not my strong my strongest suit uh, when I'm drawing and getting to draw a place that is so interesting so unique as as New Orleans was very interesting for me as an artist like it picked my interest my interest immediately yeah so uh, I relied a lot on references because me and Cami we were exchanging those sort of uh, visual uh, references all the time I actually only got to see New Orleans for the first time earlier this year after oh, wow. I was done with the book but it was interesting because I got to see a lot of stuff that I had to draw the previous year yeah, you get to find your own panels. You yeah, yeah, exactly. The panels you'd already drawn. Yeah, it's amazing. That was very interesting. <laughs> Our friend took him on um, like a walking tour of, of the book. The most, like, like, yeah, yeah, he yeah. Drew. <laughs> like, <laughs> that's cool. You get to experience Google Maps through your own. Exactly, that's exactly. That's it. <laughs> now the amnesia storytelling in this is really great because it's a character who's origin is known, but you get to retell it in your own way, and the use of amnesia really allows for that to be your voice. And I also like that the, the pen gets more detailed as her story gets more detailed. You yeah. can find things in that. When you were mapping the story out, did that change when the amnesia started? To, or was it always this consistent, like going into the second act, she finds herself and yeah. then in the third? For me, the trick was I really love the Raven that Marv Wolfman and um, George Perez created. And yeah. so I wanted to keep as much of the character I love as I could, but also add something new and make it relatable to people who might not, you know, might think, oh, I don't, I'm not into graphic novels. Like I really want to change their mind. Yeah. So, um, one of the things was I didn't want to lose her origin story, but starting out with her knowing that about herself would have been very difficult. So I just decided, you know what, like I'm, I like to do the thing people say you can't do. So I'm like, I can make amnesia fresh. Yeah. And so my, whole arc for her was, um, you know, I am all for a strong heroine, but not every teenage girl starts out strong. A lot of them um, think they're not strong and they have to find, dig deep and figure out that they are. Yeah. So I wanted her to start out as kind of like unsure. And then over the course of the book, you see her find that inner strength and you see it come forward. And I love the relationships that form from that. All, all the relationships feel authentic and, and the romance, man. Like <laughs> it's hard to capture romance and not feel like cloying. And I think you really got that, especially it, with them two. What, what was what was some of your influences in, in framing the way you did? Uh, so I have this uh, original story, which is uh, what I'm most famous for besides my Teen Titans work. Uh, Icarus and the Sun, and it's uh, about a relationship, so that's a thing that I absolutely love to draw. Uh, relationships, dialogues, characters in general, but romance is a thing that I, it's one of my favorite things to draw. So I, I, I'm glad that Kemi put that on the on the script. Like so. the almost kissing, I was yeah. like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, can, you remember high school, you remember totally. that feeling of like, I'm uncomfortable, but this is great, oh no, what have I done? Uh -huh. <laughs> now with this specific art style, who were some of your influences in the comic space growing up? Was, were you a comic book kid? Uh, I'm, I was not, especially because in Brazil there's no comic book shops at all. So especially uh, when I was a kid, it was even harder to, to get into comics. So that's why I relied a lot on the, on the Teen Titans cartoon mm -hmm. to get me into the comics. Because I, I got hooked up on comics later on when I was in high school. So um, for this specific novel, my, my inspirations were uh, Jorge Jimenez. He mm -hmm. was working as, on Super Sons. I love how dynamic his, his poses are. I love his graphic style. Um, I love Otto Schmidt. He's a Russian artist, also working for DC. He was doing the Green Arrow, the okay. iconic rebirth of Green Arrow. And his style transitions a lot from cartoony to more comic book-ish style. So mm -hmm. that's that's an approach that I also try to follow. The the kinetic energy of Jimenez, I totally see here. That's that's Thank absolutely you. yeah. That, that's <laughs> it, like see that now. Uh, when you were first approached to expand this universe out, what made you decide? Like I know we can't talk too much because I'm excited to read it and not know. But Beast Boys next. What? Why was that the number two? What, what followed? Um, well, I think Raven was number. Beast Boys, Gabriel's favorite, Raven's my favorite, Perfect. and then second favorite's <laughs> the other way. So I think since I was in the meeting and he wasn't hired yet, <laughs> I was like, I want to do Raven. Um, and then, you know, Beast Boy is so fun and, you know, he's dying to do Beast Boy. Like, I couldn't <laughs> be like, we were going to do something else in between. <laughs> so. Um, and I, I, was, I was not sure I would get to draw Beast Boy. I was like, hoping, hoping, like, praying every day like that I would get this book. Um, after I got this book, I had to hold it, hold the secret for like half a year. That was that was <laughs> tough. I was like dropping hints whenever I could, but I couldn't couldn't talk about it, you know. Yeah. But it's my favorite character, so I'm having a blast working on it. And it's fun because you know Beast Boy, 
always comes across in the, you know, in the younger versions, the teen version of Beast Boy. You know, he's like super funny. He's always cracking jokes. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to keep all that. But I also wanted to see like what else is there. Because True. obviously, like, you can be funny and have a great sense of humor, but that doesn't mean, you know, you don't have problems and things aren't bothering you. Yeah, absolutely. And you don't have other stuff going on. So I wanted to kind of dig into that. As a fan of the character, that's my favorite part of drawing this story. Because there's there's so much more than just just the comic relief, just the, 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 side of, the, the side of Beast Boy that everyone already knows, you know? Sure. Well, that's why I like, like Kyle Rayner, the, the Green Lantern. He's got, like, the darkest stuff yes, going on, but yes. he's the most funny of the Green Lanterns, in my opinion. And I feel like Beast Boy is a comic relief that uses that as a defense mechanism. Exactly. Yeah. And that's I, how, how, that's my take too. I, and I'm fascinated to see with this style because I love the young adult take how that be, I'm very excited for Beast Boy, if you can't tell. Like I'm twitching <laughs> to find out, to follow this up. And I love the amount of purple in this and I'm excited to see like the use of green. I'm excited to see this, this palette as it's formed. Is there ever a character in another medium you guys want to touch on? Like outside of the, the world of Titans? Um, we have some, some secrets going. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some okay. secrets cool between us that we can't share. I love vague But looking. I, just so you know, in the back of Raven, there's a little preview of Beast Boy because you were mentioning really wanted to see something green. Oh, yes. <laughs> so I thought I might just tell oh, you that yes. for later. Okay, perfect. It's right now, like right now live, guys. I got to experience. <laughs> now with this book, it turns into a full-fledged origin story by the end where we catch up to the raven that is that is the raven we all know and it introduces there's a character in here that's very iconic to the world and it's only teased was that intentional is there going to be more of that character in other iterations i mean there might be uh. <laughs> <laughs> he's like one of my favorite characters okay good because that's, that's a very important character to me was there anything in this book that surprised you while you were developing it like a, a page that you hadn't thought of and it just kind of organically appeared um i mean i always beat out the main beats but um there was a lot of kind of like dialogue, like where I thought I knew what the characters were going to say, but especially Max, who we developed, who's Raven's foster sister. Since that's not a character I knew as well, it's like after a while, she would just be like, no, I'm not saying that. This is what I'm saying. Yeah. And there were just some moments where also I would see Gabriel's art. And like after I saw it, I was like, this is what he would say to her this is what they would say to each other oh that's really cool you know that what I reflected mean? back yeah so i would ch i changed the script a lot and luckily um i had flexibility because the letter didn't have a lot of those pages yet so i would just go back the minute i got the art and look in case see if i need to change anything oh that's fantastic and art wise i think a lot of cool pages came out and it was not predicted pre predictable from the layout because when you see the layouts it's just like some sticky figures and like <laughs> some some panels and some lines and then you you it turns out into beautiful pages so i especially love the ending and i think it's the, the part that uh, i got to draw the the best illustrations of in this book so I, I can talk about it, obviously, because everything is going to be a spoiler. But <laughs> right. So I was very vague about that one character we all like yes. in this one thing. Yeah, yeah, but, but, but that was my favorite part to draw, like, because there's so much, so much action and so much, so much stuff going, feelings all, all, the, all over the place. So it's a really exciting moment of the book. And while we're staying vague, uh, Max's power set. I, I really love the way it's illustrated because it feels both like New Orleans and an authentic version of her power set. And it was interesting because I don't think of this character as taking place in New Orleans, but for obvious reasons, but with this, that ties into to Max so beautifully. What was the idea for that? Do you, like, were you in New Orleans and that struck you or have you always wanted to write that story? Um, I have spent a lot of time in New Orleans. Um, I have gone there over the years. Uh, Beautiful Creatures was filmed there. I right. spent a lot of time hanging out in cemeteries over the long weekend. <laughs> so um, I just feel like it's a place where it feels like magic is kind of alive and well. Yeah. There's, you know, ancestral history. Um, there's, you know, so much reverence for the past. And so I just felt like that was a place where something could be hidden in plain sight very easily. Mm -hmm. And also there's, a, you know, my family, my mom's family is from a small town in the South. Like you, they believe in spirits and things like that. Like that's not a, an unheard of thing. So I also wanted Raven to be able to have a person that when she wanted to open up, that person would be like, oh yeah, like par for the course, you know, like I've heard about that. Standard. Like, yeah, where it's not like, oh, you know, like we need to really talk about you know, your level of reality. Yeah. So. Are you okay? Yeah. Yeah, I fine. wanted someone to, I wanted someone who would be able to, um, to at least, you know, try to understand and believe her. Absolutely. That makes total sense. And, and, and having never been there, like once again, you really captured that flavor and it must've been surreal to be there after. Uh, is there anything in the world of comics now that you've 
kind of been in this world, you didn't get to grow up with it, but now you're in there. Is there a, like a gateway book you'd recommend to people that you really enjoyed coming into comics? A gateway book. Um, my first uh, comics, the, the, the book that got me into comics, hooked up into comics again, was The Burnside Batgirl from mm -hmm. DC. Yeah, so uh, the artists in this project, I love them so much to this day. I follow their work online. So uh, that's a book that I totally recommend. Uh, I would say Super Sons because it's such a, such an interesting story and it's, it's so, so alive and full of action. I totally re recommend it too. If you want to get into superhero comics, mm -hmm. that, I, I will I will totally recommend this. If you're not into superheroes, I recommend reading Raven because you know it's a more YA approach of superheroes. So yeah, I, I totally agree. If it, it fits both sides of the comic exactly. book spectrum, and I, and I think that's definitely a strength. And I love the fact that I can recommend this to people that don't read comics, mm -hmm. and then they might read comics. Yeah. Uh, is there anything that you discovered while you were getting into this world that you really think is approachable? Um, I love uh, Mariko Tamaki and Joel Jones's um, being super. Mm -hmm. And again, because I feel like it has a it's it's a superhero story, but it has a real story to it. Uh, and if you're not like a diehard superhero fan, you can just like enjoy it for that for the sake of that. Yeah. Um, I'm also a huge Super Sons fan. Um, I also love Gotham Academy. I love Lumberjanes. Oh, Lumberjanes like, is great. You know, like I just I love Lumberjanes. Um, I and then if it's like more comics, like you know, I love Monstrous, and um, I read also adult. So. Right, right, and, and it's a really good time to be a comic book fan because it's such a wide There's swath so much of types stuff of books. Out. Yeah, yeah and, and they're really approachable right now. And I think DC's done a really good job letting the classic characters be reintroduced in so many different ways. Uh, as we wrap this up, you were talking about Marv Wolfman, and Marv Wolfman, I think, is such a brilliant mind, and he's so great about the world adapting his his work in new ways. George Perez as well. Uh, what was one of the favorite things you gleaned from from talking to Marv? So I got set up <clears> on like a supposed like accidental lunch meeting with him that was totally <laughs> orchestrated and I said like you know what you know do you have any advice and he said you don't need to listen to me like I don't want don't do what I did I want you to do your own thing and he said something to the effect of like I just believe that like Raven is is as important now as she was when I originally wrote her and I want like new readers and generation to like fall in love with her and love her as much as I do and so mm -hmm. I was like I can do that I, you definitely did these characters justice, both of you. Thank you guys so much for making a book that is for comic fans and non-comic fans alike. I couldn't put this book down, and, it, and it's quite the read to keep you going. And it reminded me of my own like life, which is such a hard thing to capture when dealing with demons. So that's, I mean, for some. Uh, so thank you both so very much. I cannot wait for Beast Boy, because Beast Boy is my favorite, so I'm with you there. Uh, check it out. It is on the stands right now, wherever comics and books are sold. It is so good. Thank you so much for Raven, and thanks for joining us today, guys. Thanks, thanks for, for having, having us. us.